Okay. So, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and start, Bailey, with some warm ups, if that's all right with you. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so um, th this is basically to uh, sort of activate proprioceptive processes. Start with a deep breath in, hold it at the top, and then pull in your stomach a bit so the air goes up into your chest. And as you breathe out, pay attention to the tug of gravity on the middle of you and notice your response to gravity. Yeah, with each breath, that's right, same. Just pull it in. Pull in the stomach a bit and then. Notice your response to gravity, whether you feel to elongate up, whether you feel to stretch something or move something. Do your best to just guess at your body's cues and follow them. The body thrives uh, on your attention, whether or not you actually get the cues exactly right. Part of the reason why I'm having you do that thing where you pull the stomach in and bring the air into the chest is that uh, it pushes the spine into its natural sort of S-shaped curvature. And when it does that, the spine isn't always ready to go into that position. And it's it's like pinging the spine for a response. And then it, it, you just get a more rapid response. Realistically, you could just be breathing in and breathing out and feeling gravity, and suddenly you would get all the same things. Uh, this is just a more rapid way to stimulate uh, communication on the inside. It's kind of the the impatient person's, uh, you know, version of doing this. And how many of us in busy Western culture uh, can be in that state <laughs> and still want to be able to connect with our bodies? OK. And sometimes what you'll hear is um, you'll hear little creaking sounds on the inside, like the fascia moving and separating like it's supposed to. And that's fine. Yeah. OK, and after this breath. We're going to do a different warm up uh, maneuver here. I'm going to have you start leaning from side to side. And breathing uh, a little deeper than normal. If you've been tired and down, it might be nice to breathe in slow and breathe out with kind of a drop. Part of the reason why uh, is that it it basically prolongs the activation of sympathetic nervous system uh, by by elongating the the breath in. If you've been a little more on the anxious side and would love to ramp down a bit, it tends to be better to breathe in uh, deep, uh, sometimes a little quicker, and then breathe out slower and longer. So that tends to prolong the parasympathetic response. You know, I've had had some a run of months where I've been working a lot more uh, than usual, just having you know taken on some projects that that I wasn't running before, and uh, and also private practice is getting pretty busy. And so what I've what I've been doing is um, a lot of times when I'm just connecting with myself, I will be doing longer breaths in and then quicker breaths out, just to 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 keep stimulated, awake, alive, that kind of thing. And with you know the kids getting used to sleeping at night, that kind of thing. <laughs> All right. Now, what I'm going to invite you to do while we're moving like this, uh, Bailey, is I I'm going to invite you to uh, feel the sensation of movement just from sort of centimeter to centimeter, almost like you're driving it from centimeter to centimeter as you move. You're feeling it, and you're you're purposely uh, doing it. It's a little hard to stay breathing in a regular pattern when you're doing that, when you're concentrating with this level of potency like that. Uh, but eventually, even if you forget to breathe, don't worry too much about that. Your medulla obligata is going to send you a message saying, breathe, breathe. You know, we'll do that to you. OK, now for some people, Bailey, this heightens 
the inner connection, the proprioceptive connection. For some people, it's just a chore, but give it a whirl. Uh, some people like to imagine a pendulum hanging from their chin down to between their hips. And they'll just lean from side to side. Yeah, that's good. Follow your body's cues to adjust and move. That's right. Uh, but some people imagine a pendulum going on the inside of them while they're doing the movement rather than feeling it from centimeter to centimeter. And the reality is this doesn't need to be a huge movement uh, for some people who are having spinal issues or difficulties. Uh, the slightest movement is going to be enough for them if, if, if too much hurts. We're, we're activating um, feedback and feed forward loops and the inner ear is a big player in that when it comes to proprioception. Yeah, feeling your position in space. Okay, uh, next warm up, what we're going to do is we're going to be breathing in and raising the arms and breathing out and lowering the arms. So at your speed. I mean, other than expanding the rib cage, um, when you do this kind of thing, turning attention into the muscles that are doing the work, into the sort of pressure sensations in, in the connective tissues and the muscles, it, um, it heightens that same sort of proprioceptive feedback feed forward system. And any one of these maneuvers, Bailey, can be used when you're dealing with, say, you're dealing with some anxiety or you're starting to become really successful in something and feeling the weight of it really heavy upon you. Um, when you're working with the body mind system and something gets stuck, any one of these maneuvers will help unstick it. Yeah. Help it move towards uh, reintegration and completion so that you can feel the dynamic flow of you. You can feel your natural state of sort of passion, compassion, Curiosity. Those kinds of things. Yeah, and follow your body's cues whenever it cues you best you know how. A lot of times when I'm doing this sort of thing, uh, my body will cue me to do something with my shoulders or something with my neck, because I think those are some of the most neglected uh, parts of me that hold stress that <laughs> it'll be curious you know i mean each, each person has whatever their their body does with them when it comes to holding stress the parts that they don't notice and the parts that mine, they do it oh, into sorry mine just sort of feels like whenever i'm stressed it makes me look really tired and like i want to yawn but i know that i've had like the correct amount of sleep and i've eaten right but then if i get to like oh i'm trying to do something i just want to yawn but i don't know where it's like come from it just comes really randomly oh that's wonderful uh, yawning is is a great uh, rebalancing maneuver that the body does. I mean, other than restoring the oxygen carbon dioxide balance, it, it does other things too. You, a lot of times while you're yawning, um, that, that arresting, that pausing, and then that sort of movement that comes with yawning is just, it's, it's a great way to, to allow things to reintegrate. And sometimes when I'm working with somebody that's been having chronic stress or really, I mean, whether it's, whether it's chronic stress or more the post-traumatic stuff, um, the yawning comes up. And they'll say, oh my goodness, I'm like doing yawn after yawn after yawn. And I'll say, great, keep yawning. <laughs> Don't suppress the yawn. It's not rude, it's progress, you know? And so, um, yeah, the yawning, is, the yawning is one of the things that'll come up. It's a rebalancing maneuver. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's a great way of cooperating with your body on that. And so what, what I'm gonna do is bring up uh, an information sheet here. Let's see if I can find it. My goodness. I know it's in here somewhere. So, so this I sent you th this before. This is something that I've often used in group therapy with people. Um, once I pull up the sheet, I'm sure I'll be able to share it. Here we go. Okay, so are you able to see that, Bailey? Yeah, I'm able to see that. Okay, so there's a set of techniques uh, on the sheet, but what I really want to focus on is on page two here. Mm -hmm. uh, is that is that big enough? Yeah, that's big enough. That's fine. Okay, so signs of energetic discharge. Um, w when it comes to the body reworking neuroceptive patterns, 
uh, when, when it comes to uh, overcoupled responses with like the phobic and post traumatic responses, when it comes to, um, you know, constant patterns of running high with chronic stress or running extra low, being in energy conservation and shutdown mode. Um, when we're reworking it and we're starting to get back to, um, you know, good good dynamics in, in the polyvagal system, a lot of times you're going to feel some sensations. Okay, it's nature's energetic exhaust pipe opening up, and I'm going to, uh, how, how about we'll take turns reading the bullet points. Uh, are you able to read out loud the, the two bullet points, uh, the gentle? And, yeah. Okay, yeah, go ahead and read those two, and I'll read the next two. Gentle, pleasurable tingling or a connected vital feeling. Feelings of warmth or heat, these can get rather intense, but if you tolerate and allow them, you enjoy the relief from them as the heat finishes circling through. Yeah, and I didn't mention sweating. Sometimes the sweating happens and 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 people get a little disturbed by that. It doesn't need to be disturbing. It's it's the action happening you won't get stuck in a pattern of perpetual sweating and heat cycling or hot flashes what will happen is um if you stay with it uh you you don't get stuck in a holding pattern it actually finishes and you feel the relief um shivers mild shaking or little jolting movements people often get worried if this happens but if you'll allow the feeling to complete and follow your body's cues to shift and move your muscles the shivers will eventually calm down Deep relief typically follows completion. Bursts of emotion, you'll want to allow the emotion or tears to come through to enjoy relief. I didn't mention nausea. Sometimes you get little bursts of nausea and with the trapped old emotion. Um, can you read the last one? Bursts of thought, just like your skin puts out sweat and your lungs puts out air, your brain puts out thoughts. Observe these thoughts or memories curiously instead of making any hasty decisions. Yeah, very good. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that off of share if I can figure out how. All right. OK, and so is is that making some sense? Yeah. So so one of the things that we, we observed last time when you and Eva were both on is that um, we, we were working on um, neurodynamic resonant processing. People will feel these things inside their bodies and when they're feeling that inside their bodies when they're connected to their bodies and they're observing each other, they're going to feel internal maneuvers with each other. Um, one of the things that that happened was Eva was evoking, evoking a feeling of just just positive, you know, pleasure resource feeling. And what whenever you do that, uh, you get things flowing inside of you and a lot of times things start to move towards shivering through you. Stress products start to release and that sort of thing will start to happen uh, as the as the um, expansion of a resource state happens inside you and your what you were doing is you were attending to your internal experience and intermittently one of the things you really noticed was up in the shoulders and in the face you would you would get this activation that would come through and as you did so um, one of the things Eva noticed was that um, the feelings that for her would normally rise and then just fall and rise and then fall it's it felt like it was moving through we we were using some joint imagery where where you would you would imagine it pulling through you and she yeah. would imagine it pushing through and really that was that was a next level thing for her she felt it going through as opposed to just kind of rising and falling mm -hmm. and um that's exactly what it does when you're working with a client or when you're working with a sufferer let's say you're not necessarily a therapist but you're a mental health worker listening to someone as you breathe and attune to your body yeah and keep following your cues because you keep having that activation and movement. That's good. Yawn if it comes, definitely. <laughs> but if you, if you, if, if, if while you're breathing and attending to your body and observing them, a lot of times you're going to feel activation with them. And as you do so, um, and you're sort of metabolizing it inside of you, they're going to feel different. They're not necessarily going to feel exactly what you feel, even though sometimes they do. The mirror response sometimes is point for point. But most of the time, it's like they just feel movement on the inside of them. Yeah. And so, yeah, and so like like uh, Eva did at that point, you you were uh, basically telling wordlessly telling her nervous system, I am here with you. I'm refusing to abandon you. Uh, as as the movement happens within us, I, I'm willing to receive it. And her nervous system was able to feel the the receptivity 
because you know you feel it with people you we we usually respond to how they see us we respond to how they feel about us when somebody is deeply accepting of you they really appreciate you there's a feeling to that and for a lot of people they'll describe it as i feel better like a better person for being with them you know i i just feel like i want to stay you know because i feel so accepted yeah. and um really what human doesn't need that experience I mean, on a deep level, like we were talking about, there's a limbic revision happening. Sometimes breaches are restored. And um, a lot of times as we give that to a person and rise strong with them, some of our own breaches are restored. Not that we want to, you know, um, go into the healing work just to heal ourselves. But let me tell you, um, that process does happen and there's nothing wrong with it. You know, um, that, that we that we heal with the people that we heal. Yeah. And so um, what I was hoping we could do, and, and tell me your thoughts on this, um, I was hoping we, we could um, work further on starting with the self attunement and then going into, bless you, and then going into uh, um, basically the, the practice of like, like, like you did with Eva last time, attuning to another person. Sound yeah. good? Yeah, sounds good. All right. And so um, out of curiosity, uh, do you have any sort of uh, feelings of either repetitive, <laughs> stressful or negative things that have come up lately or feelings of um, just positive things that have come up that maybe we should amplify? Um, I've got a few stressful things that have been coming up lately, yeah. OK, and um, while you don't have to talk about the actual content of what's going on, we can work with it regardless of whether you talk about it. Um, talking about it, if it's something that's actually comfortable talking about, it's one of the quick ways into the feeling. It's not it's 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 uh, not necessary. But would you per, would is it something that you would like to talk about or is it I something that's, that you, not. <laughs> that's great? OK, so let's 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 go for um, feeling it as you think about it in general is it more of and i'll just ask structural questions i'm not going to ask about content okay is is it is it more of a feeling that keeps coming up or more of a thing outside of you that keeps evoking your feelings a thing okay yeah a thing that keeps coming up and a lot of times when you're busy and you're out there whether it's work or school or um social relationships there are outside things that keep coming up and keep evoking a feeling for, for therapists and caregivers, a lot of times is if it was an especially volatile client, they're going to have um, really strong feelings whenever they hear that client's voice. They're going to have survival responses going into the office if it's been really troubling. And if you have a situation that evokes survival responses in you, this is absolutely something we can work with. OK, and and learning how to work this uh, is, is going to continue to serve you as you sort of rise up through whatever you do as you progress in in uh, in your career and in, in your in your you know the social circles that you run in. So um, as you think about the situation, Bailey, uh, does a does a feeling come up related to it? Not really, like usually it does. But I don't know now that I'm trying to force myself to feel something through it. It's sort of nothingness a little bit. Uh huh. And that's great that you have a I, I'm guessing I, I could be wrong about this, Bailey, but I'm guessing that because we're, we're trying to bring it up artificially, there's a part of you that's pushing back and saying no, <laughs> you know, you're we're, it's all I can do to just keep this from overwhelming your life. And you're going to tell me right now in this in this social setting, you know, that's where, where, where I wouldn't want to bring this up anyway. You know, you're, you're going to make me talk on the inside. No, no, I'm pushing back. And and so what we want to do that, since that is a really important part of you that we don't want to go away, that's a good part of you. Uh, let's work with that part of you. OK, the one that pushes back. Now, when it comes to where the I mean, sometimes you can feel the sensation of this is where it feels like the pressure is blocking everything out or where the screen is covering everything. Uh, if you were to guess, is it somewhere up high in the body, somewhere down in the middle or down low? Maybe like, not really my throat, but like this bit here. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you have a yeah, and I, I I'm I'm not a physiology expert, but you have and you have this diaphragmatic structure that comes back from from back behind there, and so so what I'm going to invite you to do is um let's 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 start by just feeling into it, breathe deeply, turn attention into the um the shape of that sort of block feeling in there, just below the chin, and get a guess as to how big it is. Chances are it's big in some parts and then tapers away and just into nothing elsewhere. It's going to change because you're watching it, but just keep watching it. And just tell me what you observe as you turn attention into it. As I turn my attention to it, almost like um, something in my brain just gives me a wave of like tiredness and it's just like trying to force me to like, my eyes start to like ache a little bit and like the temptation to yawn is there as well, which I didn't feel before, but like as I'm trying to turn my attention towards it, it's like, nope. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely saying it's like if anything, get me to sleep, you know, <laughs> get, get me away from here. And so uh, th this is an important juncture here. Uh, now that a need has been expressed, you know, a need for for to, to go to safety and to get rest, um, let's rather than this, this is the, the essence of self leadership, rather than shoving it aside, which sometimes we have to for survival reasons, we have to shove it aside sometimes, you know, for, for the necessities and rather than um, bowing down to it and just doing exactly what it says, uh, getting to know it is is and and basically sending the message repeatedly. Your needs are important. Um, I want to I want to make decisions that are touched by your needs. You know, it's kind of the idea like when you're when you're with a really good leader, a good team leader or manager, what happens is they don't they don't always do exactly what you say. What they what it happens instead is they they really hear your voice and take you into account. They have to make the decisions they have to make based on per prerogatives and priorities beyond what what you want and what you need. Uh, but the, but basically being touched by your needs, letting it color what they do and how they choose meeting your needs where they can. That's that's what a, a really good leader will do. And this is exactly what the processes within you need from from a conscious being with a multifaceted life like you, you know, so be breath in and send a message down to that feeling saying I noticed. That you feel a need to sleep. Is that right? So as I do that, there's like always twitch in my eyes. Uh -huh. It's like a twitch in your eyes right there. And if, if you were to guess at which way the twitch would like to go, is it more to close them or is it more to do something else? Close. OK, so let's let's try this. We'll do take the sensory motor route to it. Um, as you continue to breathe and attend to the feelings in the face from the face down to that. This this section of, of, of uh, your face down here. Um, slowly close and open your eyes. Feeling the muscles in your eyes. And breathing. OK, a bit of activation there if, if I'm if this is a mirror response and not just my internal response. OK. Uh -huh.
I keep doing that. Uh, if they're, if we are engaging the, the pathway that leads to sort of the, the neuroceptive root of what you're feeling, chances are there's going to be some action um, somewhere from, from, from the chest down through the gut. Well, I mean, I'd say really more like from the mouth down to the gut. I was looking at the, the vagus nerve system being activated. Um, I kept feeling intermittent sort of little lightweight waves of activation going through, and I wasn't sure if it was just my own or if, if it was uh, some of it in mirror response to you, but what have you noticed? Um, a similar pattern to which it comes and goes from within waves. So I think maybe you was picking up on something. Uh, and so because what'll and yes, and so what'll what'll often happen with that is um you'll either feel it or what or there will be so many defensive processes saying feelings are dangerous right now that you that you just like you'll, you, it's like the feelings not only are less but or, or not only not happening but less like less than usual mm -hmm. and that you will see that sometimes with people that are really really stressed out you know that are that that turning attention into the body is a dangerous thing for them they haven't yet been able to feel like there's a friendly universe on the inside and so but for you that isn't that isn't a barrier you were doing the sensory motor sort of attending you know with the feeling and then the activation was able to come up be able to feel it and um part of the reason why i'm going to keep having you dialogue with the, with the feeling as if it's a person is that it um creates a sort of separation the part of you that was sort of taking over is now you're, you're separating from it without abandoning it without um ignoring it or suppressing it yeah you're like giving it acknowledgement acknowledgement oh well said it's a great way to put it and so when it comes to acknowledging this part and its needs um let's go ahead and continue the dialogue if that's all right so deep breath in, and as you breathe out, send a message uh, down into the into the eyes, into the face, saying something to the effect of, it seems like that's important to you, that I notice that you need this, that you need rest. Is that right? I get sort of like a pain in my stomach, but then I can also feel like a sensation here and then like almost sharp in my stomach when I um, say that internally. OK, so I'm guessing one of two things is happening here. I could be wrong on both scores, but one thing that could be happening is that there's there's another feeling that was behind the, the defensive barrier that's finally starting to become more um, noticeable. OK, the other thing that could be happening is that this part here, this this set of processes that we started working with is essentially saying no and get away from me. <laughs> you know? And so let's account for those possibilities with this next uh, outreach maneuver here. So deep breath in and send a message of um, when I talk with you about this, uh, I, I, I get sort of a sharp feeling in my stomach. I'm wondering, is it OK that we're talking about this? Come, like the pain in my stomach comes and goes, but it's almost as if it's turning into like an anxiety feeling, and like my hands quite sweaty. Okay, okay. So either way, we're getting we're getting movement and progress. Um, but since it is a little bit activating, and and we do have some internal when it comes to discharging the stress, there does it, we have to rise up from from shutdown to activation to release and reintegration and that kind of thing, and so. Um, since it can be a little disturbing for the parts of us that usually defend and usually shut things down, um, let's no worries. 
no worries. Um, let's go ahead and acknowledge that and uh, in, invite um, ongoing cooperation, okay? So deep breath in and just tell this part. It seems like even though there's, there's some feelings of disturbance on the inside, this is right. Uh, this is not going to last forever. This is going to be a short term feeling of energy moving through us. Will you stay with me? While this moves through us. And just see what kind of response comes up while you breathe and as you attend. Welcome, welcome the tension. One of the best things you can do for this part of you is to be sending a message mentally that this is exactly right. This is going to bring us somewhere good. So there still is a bit of tension here, but it feels like the stomach pains have almost gone, I suppose. Uh -huh. So so you felt you feel the tension. If anything, it's pooling up here, but yeah, yeah, like it wants to like it's just moving. Yeah. yeah, it follows that pattern. And so definitely it was just interesting because it, it, it both tracks the <laughs> the direction of of, of um, the vagal ladder and activation going upward and it, and it I mean ultimately it's it tracks the similar purging pattern that, that we get inside when our when our stomach is expelling something out of our mouth you know that kind of thing but it actually happens energetically instead of with um anything expelling out of our mouths so yeah. um, um what, what yeah what I'll invite you to do then is can continue to breathe with it uh, in fact we can encourage it a little further let's just see how this goes um let's take one of those warm-up maneuvers and breathe in with raising the arms and breathe out with lowering And uh, in between breaths, uh, just wait until the body wants to breathe again. Give it room to do it. Well, you notice that general pathway of feeling kind of from here, here to here. Um, keep turning attention back to the arms until you feel like it's moved out or moved or released. Good. Yawns are good. We like those. How society thought that was rude. I don't know. <laughs> that's 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 the, the, the releasing thing. Perhaps someday we'll say like, oh, it was so wonderful. The whole audience was yawning. It was like they were all connecting with themselves as, as I spoke. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe. I feel like tension's going a little bit and like my body is relaxing more after doing that exercise. Uh -huh. But when I try and draw attention to those sensations, it's no longer having the same effect where you would have some sort of reaction. Whereas now it's just sort of like, okay, we're relaxed now. It's fine. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I was a little worried that would happen because we're, yeah, I mean, 
really a lot a lot more parasympathetic push down. Sometimes sometimes we start um, <laughs> inadvertently shutting things down and missing the mark, but that's okay. Um, let's let's just take a, just a couple minutes because I know you've got to get going. But let's just take a, a couple of minutes to um, engage in sort of the um, neurodynamic resonant processing. Okay, and so um, there, there's different ways of doing it, but what I'm going to do is. Um, I, I'm going to to talk to it as if as if I'm having a conversation with, with it. OK, and we'll just see how that goes. All right, so as you continue to breathe, I'm going to speak. And so this part of Bailey that just came up, I, I'm just I'm just going to call you Bailey's part. OK, Bailey's part. Can you hear me? If so, go ahead and show Bailey. Give her a sensation. It's like a pain here but it's a bearable one where usually i felt stuff like here but it's all like here okay great social engagement system is on enough to feel that it's even even with the blockage so i'm just gonna say thank you i'm not going to push you to do anything it's okay if i haven't earned your trust yet i just want to thank you for showing up i believe that you're trying to bring uh, bailey's deeper relief and i'm going to ask you can you feel the shape of her body and Bailey, you make sure you attend to the shape of your body. You make sure you attend to the feeling of the length of your spine and the length of your legs. OK, and I believe part of Bailey, uh, thank you. I, if, if that was activation, I felt it with you, and I just want to let you know that I think you're doing something right. And how was that for you, Bailey, right there? Yeah, it's, it's hard to put into words, but it sort of feels like understood. Understood. Good. OK, so as opposed to get away, it's understood. OK, and so so let's just uh, do just a, a couple more statements just to acknowledge the, the important work this part is doing and you keep breathing and attending. Now, part of Bailey, uh, you've you've seen the shape of her body. She's shown it to you. Uh, consider telling her uh, some of the things that you want. Let the thoughts arise to her. Whether it's thoughts or images, just do your best to send the message and she'll either feel it, see it or hear it. And uh, whatever it is that you want. Whether it's something that can be described or not. Uh, just believe believe in Bailey as the person that hears you. Perhaps you don't know that you're in her body, and if you don't, I just want to let you know that you are. And perhaps you haven't seen some of her accomplishments lately. Uh, perhaps she can show you some of the things that she's accomplished so you can get to know where she's come come to um, since the since the set of rules that you're operating under arose. And as you, as you sort of pay attention curiously, Bailey, what do you notice? Almost like a disassociative feeling, where it's like quite like, I feel like myself is like rock, rocking a little bit, a bit dizzy. Like uh -huh. Gotcha. It's 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 slipping away. So we're 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 going to end the dialogue for now. But normally, I would invite you to to track which direction it seems to be going and be with it for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, anyway, I want to thank that part of you for showing up. I want to thank you for for having this conversation. Good luck with the rest of your day and weekend. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Yes. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.